actually a little bit confused watching your show because uh, I'm actually a Muslim myself and watching your show and everything like that, it could kind of, a, a little bit, I'm not going to lie, it, it's very, very convincing most of the things that you guys are saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, one thing that I was going to say is that me, myself, personally, I was born and raised a Muslim. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. And, and, and uh, pretty much my belief is that... Uh, I mean, whatever your religion is, as long as you're a good, good human being and, and uh, you know, you just treat people fair and you're a good person, you know, I mean, and then you, you, you're, you're a good person in God's eyes. So the fact of mixing religions up, I mean, you know, Christian, Muslim, so on and so forth, is it really necessary to have an exact religion? Uh, say that again. Is it necessary to have what? To have an exact religion as an long as you're a good religion? person. Like, well, you said you said that as long as you're a good person, all right, and you're pretty much yeah. saying that you should tolerate one another, but that's not a Quranic teaching. Can you show me in the Quran where it says that you, no, if no, you... No, I don't. To be honest with you, I really don't know much about the okay. Quran, but I am all right. Muslim. All right, well, he is I appreciate good, that you want to live at peace with others who are mm -hmm. not Muslims, and as David and I have been saying, most Muslims are peaceful Muslims and don't want to start problems or fight with anyone in the West. So we agree there are many Muslims like you who want to live at peace with their neighbors, be they Jews, Christians, or Hindus, and want to respect other people's views and want their views to be respected. And we respect you for that. And we praise God that you keep that attitude. But however, we're not talking about what Muslims in the West believe. We're talking about the teachings of the Quran. Does the Quran allow... <clears throat> and tolerate the existence of other religious groups provided that Muslims have the upper hand. The teaching of the Quran is clear. If you have the upper hand, you have the military promise, the manpower to do so, then you are commanded to subjugate people to the rule of Islam. And if we're Jews and Christians, you're commanded to give us three options. Become Muslim and you'll be safe. Pay the jizya and feel subdued and humiliated. Or if you refuse to become Muslim and pay the jizya, then fight and to the victor goes the spoils. You're living in a situation in which Muslims are in the minority in the West. Therefore, they cannot impose the rule of Islam upon the non-Muslims. But we're not talking about your personal beliefs. We're talking about what the Quran teaches. If you say you're a Muslim, you must accept what the Quran teaches. And if you're not comfortable with such teachings, then we invite you to leave Islam and embrace Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Yes, and uh, I'll, I'll, just, I'll, just add, I'll, just add one, I'll just add one thing, because this is one thing we want to do on this show, is point out inconsistencies and contradictions. You say, on the one hand, I am a Muslim. Well, I have your book here, the book that Muslims are called to believe in, which is the Quran, and you've said that as a Muslim, you believe, hey, whatever religion you want is fine as long as you're a good person. But we open up the Quran, we turn, for instance, to Surah 3, 85, what does it say? It says... Whoever desires a religion other than Islam, it shall never be accepted from him. And in the hereafter, he will be one of the losers. So according to Islam, which is what Muslims believe, according to the Quran, which is what Muslims believe in, if you desire any other religion other than Islam, it will never be accepted from you. And if you follow another religion, Muslims are supposed to fight you. So again, what, what Sam just said, we, we, you, have a, you have a problem here. If you say, I believe that... Whoever wants to follow a, a different religion should be fine, and as long as you're a good person, that's all that matters. If you believe that, you have to reject Islam. If you want to continue believing in Islam, you have to say, well, that's what I used to believe. I used to believe that it's okay, uh, whatever religion you want to follow, but now I recognize that the religion I believe in tells me that no one can follow any other religion, and that I have to fight people if they follow another religion. So, it, I mean, it's, 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 you, you have to pick here. You can't say I'm a Muslim, and yet I reject what the Quran says. Uh, so you, you, there's one or two options. You have to reject what you're, what you're claiming, or you have to reject Islam. But Let me you can't give hold two, both. Two Quranic passages to further confirm what he just said. Uh, I forgot his name. Ba Basim, Abraham. two Quran Abraham, two mm -hmm. Quranic passages to confirm what he just said. He quoted one. Let me give two others. This is chapter 8 of the Quran, verse 39. Surah Anfal, uh, ayah 39. And fight them until there is no more fitna. Uh, fitna. In parentheses, these Muslim translators add disbelief, and polytheism. Fitna is disbelief and po polytheism, i.e. worshipping others besides Allah. And the religion will all be for Allah alone. Fight until the religion belongs entirely to Allah. What religion is this passage talking about? Well, you don't need to guess. He quoted Surah 385. There is no other religion acceptable to Allah except Islam, which is further confirmed by Surah 48, 28 to 29. 
Surah 48, 28 to 29. Don't forget what this passage says. Fight them until the religion belongs entirely to Allah. Here is what the religion that belongs entirely to Allah is. It's not Christianity, it's not Judaism. Surah 48, 28 to 29. He it is who sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth that he may make it superior over all religions. And all sufficient is Allah as a witness. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And those who are with him are severe against disbelievers and merciful among themselves. So the religion that belongs entirely to Allah is Islam. Allah sent Muhammad and his followers to make Islam dominant over all other religions. This is why you must be severe against me, but I pray in Jesus' name, he delivers you from this so that you embrace the peaceful rule of Christ in your heart. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ibrahim. Uh, we have uh, another call from Christian. Christian, I don't know if this is uh, Quebec or another one. Christian? Christian? No. Christian? Christian. Yeah. Oh. Go ahead. Hi, I'm from um, Windsor, Ontario. Oh, all right. And um, I, I am married to, um, my husband is Chaldean, so he's Catholic. He's, from, he's originally from Iraq. Mm -hmm. And a couple weeks ago, I had taken a friend to the Salvation Army to get help for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And in line, and I was there with my daughter, I saw a bunch of Muslim people standing there. Mm -hmm. Mind you, this is about Jesus. It's supposed to be, you know, our, the Catholic's holiday. And that question that you're talking about kind of came to my head that day about why are these Muslims trying to get, you know, cr Christmas gifts? Mm -hmm. And since, you know, we are not supposed to go to the mosque or celebrate Ramadan, we, you know, uh, invade their holiday. I was just kind of wondering, and I spoke with my husband, why are we, why are they there getting free handouts of using our holiday, using Jesus, using, you know, the birth of Jesus as a free gift for them? So Thank why you. Did they do that? Which one she wants to know why, why would they go to an event celebrating the birth of Christ and receiving right. free gifts and hands out? Well, well it, 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 can, it, can be, it can be for two reasons. One, it could just be, hey, here's an opportunity to, to get some stuff. Uh, so it could be taking advantage of, of other people's systems uh, in order to get items for themselves. Uh, but uh, e even more, more probably, uh, Muslims, as we've pointed out, Muslims in the West. Any Muslim who's in an area where he's outnumbered is allowed to deceive unbelievers uh, in order to make them believe that Islam is a religion of peace. Muhammad's, one of Muhammad's companions, Abu Darda, said, we smile in their faces while we curse them in our hearts. In other words, uh, we smile in their faces, we make them think we're friendly while we're cursing them on the inside and desiring to conquer them. So right. this, this, this could be, the, you know, I don't know enough about the situation, I don't know their hearts, uh, but given what Muslims believe, it could be one of many things. Uh, but Muslims in the West, it's important to recognize, are allowed to deceive us. They're allowed to pretend to be friendly. They're allowed to pretend to be tolerant. All the while, they're plotting to ultimately conquer us and uh, overthrow uh, anything that's non-Muslim. And just pray, and I was, uh, we got to go to break, just pray that <laughs> the Holy Spirit will use the acts of love and kindness this by Christians say, yeah. to move the Muslims to fall in love with Jesus Christ. Although their motives may be evil, we don't know their hearts, only God knows. But if they have an evil motive, the Holy Spirit is greater than their hearts and can even take that motive and use the acts of kindness and love shown by Christians to mm -hmm. bring them to fall in love with Jesus and bow the feet to Jesus Christ. So pray. Pray that the Holy Spirit will use that to minister to them and show them that the love of Christ that Christians have for them because the love of Jesus that he has for Muslims. Uh, I'm going to comment on that before we leave. From my experience, many of them, they are in great dire need yes, of amen. help. That's right. So that's an opportunity for the Praise church the to Lord. reach 